Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Welcome to Get In The Mix. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the SC6000M, the latest media player from the guys at Denon DJ. Now we've got her here in all her full glory. Let's give them a little look at the box here. We've got nice stra strapping unit on the front here. Nice big screen. You can see the big patterns there now. First thing I spot here, three month subscription to Tidal. So how's that gonna work? Well, you've got Wi-Fi streaming on these bad boys. That's right, that means that connected up to a Wi-Fi connection, you can get any tune that's available on the Tidal streaming service straight to your unit without having it in advance. So how that is gonna be so useful for those guys that are going out there doing gigs, mobile gigs, requests. Oh, I haven't got that latest drill tune from uh, Dig That. Let's quickly search it up. Oh, here it is, don't worry. What we've got here? In here, we're gonna be having, I presume, the platter, which is gonna be, of course, for our motorized platter. Now, the 6000M features a motorized platter, so that means it's got a, a platter on there that replicates the feel of a vinyl, giving you that kind of extra mixing experience. Uh, what we've got is a little bit more hands-on than your kind of classic uh, mixing. Now, in here, we've got your standard link cables, got a USB extension, we've got some RCA cables, we've got a Ethernet cable and we've got the uh, USB 3.0 for connecting it up to the computer. Here we've got a power cable which I'm not going to bother opening because we've got one set up all ready to go and I think let's just lift her out. <sighs> Ooh, little lanyard. Everybody loves a lanyard, can't go wrong. Just buy it for the lanyard, I reckon. Lanyard! A uh, little cloth in there for cleaning your screen, which is going to be very, very handy considering the size of the screen. Now, as lovely as this box is, we'll dash her off. I need a cloth to wipe my brow. Ooh. It's hot in here, by the way, just in case you haven't realised. And we'll gently squeeze her out. Ooh. Open her up here. Oh. Now she looks a bit naked without the pad, but we'll soon sort that out. We'll, uh, we'll get her some clothes. So let's move this lovely protective foam. Let's pop her down there. Move this out of the way. Give myself some space to work. First thing I noticed, <laughs> ooh, big old screen on there, Jesus. Much bigger than the uh, previous iteration. Length, just much longer. Got a couple of extra, what do you reckon? Two extra inches, you see she's got two extra inches on her big, on her younger brother. So I reckon, let's load the platter on and get her running. Let's just slot her on there. Oh, we've got a little slip mat as well this time. Very thin slip mat. Feels kind of butter rug-esque, you know, like the tractor slip mats. Very thin, perfect for butter scratching. Rug. It's what the tractor calls them, butter rugs. Don't know why, and they want it to be their own. Boom, now what I like about this already is that they've inherited the quick release from the Rain collection. Now, uh, useful to know that Den and DJ, owned by In Music, a uh, company that own a lot of uh, different brands, including Newmark, Akai, Denon, Rain, and the beautiful thing about that is that they can cross work and they can draw different things from different items. So the first thing, as I said, as I noticed, is that this quick release here, this is a new feature from the Rain 12 series, so that you can just whack it on, whack it on, without having to tighten it on the old series. You can see in here that we had a little uh, Allen key thing. You had to have the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little Allen key ever in the world. Nice and easy this time, quick release, on, off, easy as pie. Now she sits quite nicely next to the X1800 here. Of course, in the best of both worlds, we would of course have the X1850, but today we're just focusing on the player, so we're not too worried. Let's see when we power crop is, here it is. So, bosh. Now, rubber buttons, what are we feeling? Click, click. They've still got a click to them, so they're similar buttons. They feel a bit better being a tiny little bit bigger. And you can see they've got the light across the line there. Oh, cue and play feeling much nicer already. Now it's subtle differences, but that is a, a rubbery feel on a button. That is pure plastic on the old one. So it's a rubbery button. It's still, oh, it's got a nicer click to it as well, actually. Yeah, nice. Really like those buttons. I think I'm gonna turn it around. Well, actually, we can keep going. So some of the other features here, let's see, I used to really like the pitch fade on this. Oh, it's even nicer. So uh, one of the things I love about these players in particular, the pitch fade is really resistant. Now, 
well, what does that mean? Well, old turntables, vinyl players, you'd be very used to a, a bit of resistance on your on your um, pitch fader there. Whereas if you've been using something like a CDJ2000, some of the Pioneer units, you'll notice that they're very loose. A bit too loose, I think. And I think this is a bit nicer for getting that precision, you know, for that itty tiny little bits of adjustments and movements so that you can ride it, so that you can change your BPM as you go. Now, as I'm looking over here, I'm noticing that all the buttons that were all plastic before have all been replaced by nicer feeling rubber buttons. Knobs just the same, but just black instead of silver this time. We've got a lot of time for that. Shortcuts button is a bit bigger. Source, again, all nice rubbery buttons. In fact, the only plastic buttons that I can see on here are this back and forward button and the eject media button. Everything else made of rubber, really nice to touch, really nice to hand. Oh, the shift is plastic. I wonder why, old shifted plastic too. The only buttons on there that are not made of really nice rubber. So I'm going to flip her around and I'm going to load a uh, track. So again, one of the great features of the SC range in general, whether you're at the five or the six, is its kind of layer feature. Now this is a real kind of one of a kind, really. I don't know any other modern player that has this same feature. And that is that it has two sets of outputs and you can connect it to two channels on your mixer and it has this amazing little layer button where I can click it and the player becomes a whole nother player. So that means that you could do two deck mixing from one deck, which is what we're gonna do in a minute. You could do four deck mixing from two decks. You could do six deck mixing. No, you need a six channel mixer. Here's my trusty USB. Now, much the same as the ones before. We've got a USB input on the front and I believe I have a little and a couple of USB inputs on the back there. Now I'm gonna use the trusty front socket because I am at the front. We've also got an SD card reader there, which is great. And for those of you who haven't read the spec sheets, you can see this little plate here is for the HDD. Well, what is that? That means that we can install a hard drive, a fully integrated hard drive full of tunes, constantly installed. And the beautiful thing is that you can update your player and the hard drive to add in more tunes on the fly with the USB cables. You don't have to keep taking it in and out each time. It's Once it's on there, it's on there. Right, music collection found on Steigl USB 1. Would you like to update? Yes, please. 478 tracks remaining. Oh, I don't know, I could be here for half hour. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> Done. That's a whole USB of tracks imported, already ready to go. Now we've got um, existing playlists in here. So we've got me Chase and Stay here, so we for in all me bits and bobs. Right, we're gonna put a bit of this on and we're gonna also at the same time hashtag pray for Predator because he's missing in Egypt. Ooh. Time to make the car go up. Time to shut this Let's get our layer button on the go. We're gonna this switch to our other layer. Let's turn this master down a bit. We don't hear that so loud. We're gonna go source. Well, Let's find load. another track to load in. Now, how do we do the preview? That's a, that's a good point, isn't it? Right. Press on the art button. There we go. First thing I'm noticing on the preview there is that it just plays the track from the beginning. Might have been a little bit more useful to play a little bit further in because sometimes it's not easy to identify a track from the very first little intro. But an amazing feature nonetheless. The fact is, is that when I'm in a, a, a club, the amount of times that I'm going through a playlist and I'm like, hmm, what's this tune? Is, it, is that a banger? Well, maybe this one's the banger. I don't, well, let's find out. We'll quickly play that. We'll cue it in the headphones and I can hear exactly which one's a banger off the go straight away. So Wi-Fi feature here, you've got all your Wi-Fi's ready to go. Connected, boom. There we go, shortcut. So we've got color of our deck. You can see around the outside here. Orange, yellow, green. You can spice it up. What color is your favorite color? Well, I like perps, so we'll go for the perps. Uh, quantization on your Q loops, you want it in eights, quarters, halves, full holes, sync mode, bar, beat, tempo, screen brightness. In our utility again, we've got our player, we've got layer B on, we've got the Wi Fi on, we've got Wi Fi settings, uh, safety, needle locks, all these kind of essential things. Now, this is quite an important bit. I like this key notation. You can choose, are you seeing in sharps, flaps, open key, or the classic Camelot wheel? And you can also choose your BPM range and your BPM filtered tolerance so really loads of customizable options there to go side by side we're looking at these units we're thinking right 
screen difference well I mean you've got a lot more information on here so let's go and view we can see in our track list if I head to a playlist okay right so on the track there 10 tracks on the screen whereas on the SE 5000 we're looking at only five tracks on the screen but also more importantly we're looking at the resolution of the actual player itself so look at the difference between the waveforms here quite small still enough to see what you're doing but here so clear so big so much information to look at there that you don't know where to look next now let's get her rolling I reckon it's got a nice feel to the platter give me that so another great feature about the, uh, the SC 6000 and 5000 is that across the bottom we've got hot cues, loops, rolls and slices and that's a much more intricate system than on any other kind of industry standard player. We don't have access to things like rolls and loops, or loop. well you've got loop of course in and out, but you don't have access to your auto loops, you don't have access to rolls, these slicer features, all of which can kind of take your uh, manipulation and creativity to the next level. So let's uh, layer over here to the beat that we've got going. Slicer. Loops. So one hit for loop start, one hit for loop out. Click off it to come out, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so these are different loops that we can set and then recall as and when we want to. So let's get one in time. And then we can jump between these loops really easy. Now, what, one thing I really liked about that actually as it went along, especially in things like the roll loop modes, is that we get the slip on the bottom. Now, what does that mean? It means that as I launch, yes, we're rolling, we're stuck in this point, but you can see where the track was. It had it just continued to play. And when I let go, that's just gonna carry on from that point as if we've never jumped into that mode. So I mentioned earlier that the pitch is a really nice feel, but one of the great things about these players is that the pitch range is so big. You can see here we've got plus 10, when well it goes up to plus 100. Now if I get it on plus 100 and I zoom right in, well look at that. That is the waveform so zoomed in. I mean, right now that's so zoomed in you can't even hear it, but look at that. <laughs> that could be used for some really cool creative things. <laughs> and the same to go the other way, we can go much faster. So, bigger, better, badder. This is a beastie player. For all the people at home you know if you're looking to do four deck mixing on a reasonable budget but you also want to future proof your setup you know you want to make note sure that this isn't going out of date when they release a new model in six months time it's not going to happen this today has got all the features you might need we've got stage queue line connections we've got ethernet in and outs we've got multiple rca ins we've got built-in hard drives we've got wi-fi streaming the capabilities of this device they're only just scratching the surface we're going to get more and more we're going to get developments in engine we're going to get developments on the firmware this player is just the beginning but it is certainly the future hope you've enjoyed today's quick video as always like if you like dislike if you dislike chuck us a comment in the comment section and be sure to subscribe and make sure to get in the mix